don't really know what today is because, or what you're watching, because I'm kind of between names. I'm still in limbo and trying to find a, a new name for, for this channel. So uh, we're just gonna call me for right now the mythical meat man from Central Florida. Sold and steak, major meat, the kebab commander, however, whatever else you wanna call me. But anyhow, this is what we're here for today. This is a brisket. And this brisket, I'm gonna make on the Franken barrel. That's my modified barrel house cooker. I'm gonna show you all this here in a little bit, but right now it is, it's about 9.30, at, it's about 9.30 at night right now. So we'll be hitting that in the morning. But for right now, I'm gonna get the camera turned around, gonna get this fat trimmed up, and uh, gonna get some, there you go. Having made products, the beef, the beef brisket from, and for a binder, just gonna do some, I'll just call it wart sauce. And that's it, let's only get this camera pointed down and uh, let's get started. Oh yeah, this is a select brisket. Couldn't find it, I couldn't find a choice, I couldn't find a prime, I couldn't find anything. This is the best I could find, 17 pound brisket. So, I'm always up for a challenge. This is gonna be a challenge. This gets things done. All right, so I just got done washing the brisket and drying it off and I noticed that over here, there's a big tear right there. I might have to, I might be putting a skewer or something through there to try to, keep, to, try to hold that shut. And uh, I'm gonna use one of my uh, other knives I have from Meathead Knives, a stainless steel European knife. All right, so we're gonna take this piece off right here first. Now for a select, this does have some pretty good <clears throat> striations in it, which I am pretty impressed with. All right, so you see this part right here? It's gonna completely cut this off. Weigh the fat. I'll see how much that comes up to, and minus it off of here. But this is about. This is pretty good. I'm leaving some fat over here on the flat, and I mean on the point, and leave some fat over here on the flat. But I had to take a lot of fat off though. All right, I'll be right back. So I just weighed all the fat here, and it came to 5.75 pounds. So what I got left the brisket here is about 12 pounds. But I guess that's kind of what you get whenever you're kind of whenever you. Uh, don't have time to really look for a good one. Uh, well, that kind of sucks though, but let's get this thing uh, taken care of. We're gonna go with some wart sauce first as a binder. So it's about a quarter after seven in the morning. I overslept about an hour. Anyhow, I'm gonna show you guys. Um, I've made some even more improvements on the mods that I did and I kind of thought some other things out. I'm gonna share this with y'all right now. Let's take a look. I added a latch to the lid here. This is a char, char griller hinge. It's for their uh, Kamado type grill. So I installed this and it, now everything's nice and nice and nice and tight and does not smoke. And then I also went to the H-frame I uh, went back to the H-frame for the barrel house cooker. The hooks I had, the latch wasn't able to go over and it kept popping. 
this little piece out. So what I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna look for some flat hooks, some some hooks that are kind of flat that can go over. It can still hold up all the weight. But right now I'm gonna uh, put the brisket on here. I'm gonna hang it down, and there is plenty of room for this one. And then right here I've got a pecan wood. I have pecan wood up underneath the coals. I put the coals on top. I well. Um, I made a nice little hole here in the middle. Then I'm gonna light the coals here in a little bit. The reason these coals look like that is because the other night I lit some coals to see if there was any uh, smoke leaks and there was not. And I was able to snuff out all the coals. I was able to kill all the oxygen and save the coals. So far, all my mods have worked. So it's been about a little, about an hour and a half now, and right now we're pegged at 147. I got a temp probe and a point, and I got one in the flat, and right now we're running at 147. That's pretty impressive. Um, the temperature gauge, the bottom temp gauge, we're sitting right about 200, then the top one, right now was about 275, 265. So that stall is going to be coming real soon, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm probably going to wrap it up in some paper and then set it around the top of the rack. That's what I'm going to do with the stall. Or who knows, maybe I'll just even just let it just go all the way unwrapped and see how it comes. All right, also it's been a little over two hours, and it has hit the stall. It's been in this uh, between this 152 and 155 range now for a little over an hour. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put inside some butcher paper and wrap it up inside. Time now is uh, 11.30, it's been three and a half hours, and you can see here uh, 2.75 on the dome. Then down here at the base, it finally has gone up to about 3.50, so finally this, this side over here is finally hotter. But the brisket is about right here, oh yeah. Y'all check out Barbecue Pit Dog. He sent me uh, one of the stickers. Rob, Barbecue Pit Dog, I appreciate it, man. Thank you, brother. Pretty cool. So there you go, y'all go check him out. All right, so it's been four hours. The uh, internal temperature right now is about 180. So we're doing this pretty quickly. Uh, well, after I cut off, you know, 5.7 pounds of fat, and it was a 17.7 pound brisket, so I'm cooking basically a 12 pound brisket. But it all seems, the point and the flat all seem to be sort of even. But uh, all my mods uh, that I did are like, it's everything I had envisioned and it's working perfectly. It's working flawlessly. So, I mean, I'm really, really, really happy with the mods that I did to it. So uh, I'm gonna give this probably, I think probably about, you know, two more hours. I wanna say it's gonna be probably about a six hour cook, probably two more hours, three more hours at the most. This is gonna be complete. But of course I gotta let it rest. All right, so 180 after four hours, that is awesome. All right, so it's one o'clock. It just hit the five hour mark and right now the internal temperature is 192. It's pretty good. looks like it's gonna be right around uh, maybe the five and a half, six hour mark to complete this uh, this brisket. Then of course you gotta let a couple hours to let it rest. Time right now is 234. The internal temperature has just hit 200 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it, wrap it, and uh, let it rest for a couple hours. All right, so here we go. Let's cut into this thing. Uh, a little bit of fat here stuck to the uh, to the brisket, but I want to do is I want to separate. All right, there we go. Here's the here's the point. I'm actually about to uh, cut this up and make that into some burnt ends. And then here is the flat. Flat looks uh, looks pretty delicious. Okay, so the grains are running this way. Let's cut into that.
Look at that. Real nice. You can practically eat that, right? Now let's look at this. Uh, got that. Scoot that over to the side. Let's look at this point here. Okay, we got a little bit of fat here on the point, but that's good. Um, remember, I had this uh, cut right here from the from the butcher when they're processing. So now we're just gonna cut this up into chunks. These burnt ends, I'm going to use. Uh, this is from Smoking and Grilling with AB. This is his line. This is uh, Smoking and Grilling with AB's uh, line of barbecue sauces. I haven't been able to do a, a video on it yet, but I'm going to do it right now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put that on there. So there we go. Oh, I've got to do something else. Put some more of this on there. Flats. Here is the points, the burn ends. Let's give the sucker a whirl. Right there is the burn end. And over here is some flat. Now it's time for taste test. All right, let's give this a try. Here's that some of that flat. Oh, yeah. It just breaks apart. These barrel cookers make some phenomenal brisket. Man, I got my uh, whiskey maple syrup barbecue sauce on here. Wow, it really sets it off good. Now I'll try some of that uh, uh, spicy barbecue sauce. That smoking with grilling with AB sent me. I got on those uh, burn ends. Try that. There's a freaking love bug invasion around here and they are all over the place. Here we go. Burn end. Look at how beautiful that is. Absolutely awesome. And this brisket took six and a half hours. It would have took about five and a half to six. I wasn't paying attention to the temperatures. The temperatures kind of dropped. So I had to come back out. I had to open up the, the flues again and get the fire started back up because uh, the temperatures did drop to about 200 degrees. So I had to get it back up there. Uh, but anyhow, this was freaking awesome. And, uh, and every single mod that I did for this barrel house cooker, it was spot on, perfect. Everything went according to plan. Everything went almost the way I wanted to except for the rack. The only problem I had was with the hooks I had to hold the, the gateway drum, a hanging rack on there. Uh, they, they didn't make the lid fit on there good enough and so I had to uh, go use my H frame for the barrel house cooker and it made the, uh, the brisket hanging there kind of weird but it still came out perfect. So uh, thanks to everybody at Barrel House Cooker you know, for you know, allowing me to to be able to do this to one of your smokers. It, it's really, that it was a really cool thing. And also thanks to Barrel House Cooker for listening to us. And when we have a criticism or we have a correction that you go ahead and you listen and you make those corrections. Thank you so much. That's the way you should be doing it. Anyhow, like, subscribe, share this video, and I'll see y'all next week. And there might be a new name change. So be on alert for that. Ciao.